Asia is rallying uh, and that's also led to some cheer in the Indian market. So we've cooled off from the highs. I've got uh, Gorang Shah, Vice President of GOG BNP Paribas joining us now. Uh, good afternoon, Gorang. Uh, the last uh, two sessions have looked better than normal. Uh, but uh, how long will the cheer last given the fact that it is largely because of crude oil prices and what's happened in the Asian market? This is also FNO expiry week. How, uh, what's your call on the markets right now? Good afternoon, Mini. I think, first of all, let us enjoy the recovery that we saw on Friday and follow up uh, recovery today. <laughs> After the great uh, the downfall, not only in our markets, but also in the global markets. And thanks to last week's statements uh, made by the People's Bank of China, uh, injecting liquidity over there. And uh, post that, we had the ECB chief Mario Draghi making a statement in Davos that he will definitely look at uh, injecting more liquidity in the month of Feb and March as and when the need arises. So we saw cheer in the markets on Friday, followed up uh, this morning in our markets. But as we speak, I think some amount of gain that we saw in the morning part, uh, we have actually given up those gains. And rightly so, uh, given a truncated week, a uh, uh, holiday tomorrow, and uh, given the fact that you are in the if you know, expiry week, uh, volatility will rule the order of the day as we go forward closer to the expiry. Uh, to say convincingly that possibly we have seen the bottom, I think it's going to be a little bit premature because what we need to see, Mini, is not only just short covering but also fresh buying coming into the market. That seems to be a little bit there but convincingly I think you will need much more long side uh, positive numbers, buy side numbers to say that yes, uh, we have possibly seen the bottom. So a little bit premature and news flows from the global market is still driving our market. So let's hope and pray that there is no adverse uh, news flow coming in from the global markets. You know, I want to look at the composition of stocks that are up, um, uh, Gorang, because that is giving me worrying signals because the beaten down counters are up, uh, be it steel on the back of that news on uh, China carrying capacity or a stock like Kane, which had very bad numbers, but is up because of the fact that oil has rebound after uh, above the $30 mark. Uh, what's your call? Is the worst over for these stocks? Because there's... The, the bulls are making the case that the worst is over, it can't get worse than this, so it's time to start buying. Uh, what is your sense? Uh, I don't think so, both on the hard metal and soft, uh, on the hard commodity and soft commodity side, be it metals, I think just because China has cut down production doesn't mean that they are going to stop dumping. Uh, dumping is definitely going to happen because their own economy consumption is going through an absolute slow space and there was overcapacity. So that overcapacity has been cut down to a certain number as of now. But uh, dumping will definitely happen as and when they see opportunities on various geographies across the globe. So I don't see a huge, uh, you know, pullback, sustainable one on the metals pack. Uh, and not to forget many, I think numbers that will unfold for the metals pack is going to tell you a different story altogether given the fact that they are sitting on inventory, inventory point number one and point number two. Global metal prices are at five year, four year, six year low. So I don't see any meaningful sustainable recovery. Uh, it's going to be a long drawn affair. On the crude oil front and uh, on Cane India, stock was already at a lifeline low. And I think uh, the numbers that came Cane or Cane India come out with rather disappointing, I would say. Uh, the bump up that you are seeing in the crude oil prices is purely because of the extreme cold and freezing conditions which are there across the globe. Uh, including Europe and US, we've seen the kind of weather which is there, and that's going. That's raised the demand for uh, uh, furnace oil. That's why you've seen uh, recovery in the crude oil prices. But I really have my own doubts as to how sustainable this up move on crude oil prices are. And these prices of on the lower level that we've seen, meaning, is much much before Iran crude oil hits the market with its full strength into the supply side as far as the global crude market is concerned. Okay, we can get uh, Gorang into it. Gorang, you know, Bloomberg had done a story of how um, HDFC Bank was the most expensive stock, bank stock in the world, the big favorite with FIs, and that also stacks up in terms of how you see the performance of the stock. Over the last one year, it is up about half a percent at a time when banking stocks have taken a knock, and through the volatility of this year, it's down only about three and a half percent. Tell me, uh, you spoke about FII selling. Uh, is HDFC Bank also bearing the brunt of it? And given that that larger backdrop, how are you seeing the stock perform? So many, anything that is good will come with a premium and anything which is cheap will come at a discount. So if you're wanting to buy quality names, quality stocks, which are going to add value over a period of time into your portfolio, 
I think you are definitely going to pay a premium for that. So I don't uh, buy that argument that because it is uh, expensive, you should not buy. There is a reason behind it, and history has. Uh, uh, track record uh, of HDFC Bank, if you go to see, has always added value to long-term investors. So let me give a disclosure over here. We do have a positive coverage on HDFC Bank and our targets are somewhere close to about, I think, 12, 1250, if I'm not mistaken, on HDFC Bank. Uh, my sense is that uh, as all the quarters, this is also going to be one of the quarters which is going to show extreme steady performance for the bank. And opportunity is there uh, because if I sold off uh, to a great extent in the weeks and months go by, uh, primarily in the large cap, uh, this was also by the virtue of being a large cap stock uh, had to face the brunt of FI selling. But we believe that at current levels your downside is extremely protected. And our sense mini is also that the second half, calendar half of 2016 starting from June, July onwards, banking sector will be the one which will possibly take the lead uh, in terms of the market's uh, upward move. And in the banking pack, our sense is that the private sector banks are going to do relatively better compared to PSU banks. Right. Uh, but, you know, uh, what's your take then on the broader banking space? What's your top pick? Because, you know, we saw Axis do very well after the numbers. It's correcting today. A lot of buzz around the public sector banks, most of them bouncing up from the 52-week uh, lows or fresh lows that they have been, uh, you know, uh, touching. Uh, where do you find value in the banking space right now? So the bias is going to be towards uh, private sector banks as uh, I have stated earlier and as a brokerage house we do believe that uh, if in banking pack if one is invested then your first choice should be private sector banks and in that access ICICI, HDFC, Kotak, uh, Yes Bank, Indescent Bank, uh, these are broadly the banks wherein as a disclosure again we have a positive coverage on. On the public sector banks we have coverage on two stocks that I can offhand remember one is State Bank of India and the other one is Union Bank of India. And if you actually had uh, possibly an opportunity to listen to the commentary of the finance minister from that platform of Davos, then I think uh, it only reinforces our confidence that yes, uh, second half of two, uh, 2016 will possibly be the banking sector which will take the lead from the front. Okay, good uh, prospects of the banking sector according to Gorang. Gorang, uh, Hiral has taken us through the entire uh, metrics of the two stocks, but what do you like better between a Spice and an Interglobe? Well, uh, Mini, as a disclosure, uh, on Interglobe Aviation Stroke Indigo, we had a coverage when the IPO was out. And the money for all those, uh, you know, investors in, in some of subscribers to Interglobe Stroke uh, Indigo shares has almost doubled. Uh, where we saw the stock going plus 1200 if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so this correction of uh, close to about, I think, what, 15, 20 odd percent or maybe more closer to 900, um, we would still prefer uh, uh, Indigo, that is Interglobe Aviation from an investment point of view. It is good to see SpiceJet uh, turn around for the last three quarters making profit and uh, YOY, if you go to see this particular quarter, has translated into profit. And our sense is that with the existing fleet of aircrafts that Indigo, Indigo has, they will be able to maintain the current business which they were doing. Uh, yes, there is a negativity in terms of the inability of the aircraft supplier to supply those aircrafts which Indigo had ordered within that stipulated time frame. But the present fleet is quite capable of catering to the existing business. Okay. One other company that we want to talk about is Gammon India, um, Gorang, uh, and I will have my colleague Anupriya join in on this. I know you have to leave us, Gorang, but I'm going to squeeze in this little one. Uh, perhaps uh, to start off with, uh, talk about, get your perspective, and then we'll go to Anu to get a sense of what the uh, uh, fact that bankers have not got majority control on Gammon, what does it mean? But from 2011, what a come down on this stock, and I've got my Bloomberg terminal only giving me the last five years of data. But um, in 2011, we were at about 146, 150 for the stock, and we're now at 16 rupees. Uh, what do you make of the news around Gammon and the fact that it just iterates the problems in the infrastructure space? Well, apologies, Mini. I had to leave uh, a little bit early, but yes, to answer your question, uh, uh, well, uh, I think it is highly avoidable, first of all, and with these management changes, I think it is uh, going to be all the more difficult to focus on to the business. Uh, my, uh, yes, you know, these kind of uh, uh, changing environment uh, does warrant uh, the kind of, uh, you know, changes that we have seen in this particular company, but it has been a consistent underperformer. 
and somewhere i believe if i'm not mistaken and i stand to be corrected execution with this company has been a big problem and if execution has been there there has been cost overrun by delays so my sense is that uh, you could just wait out wait and watch out uh, for the new developments to unfold and then possibly take a call and you not know, to current levels to buy sell or hold i won't be able to comment because we don't have any coverage on camera india okay gorang thanks so much for joining us and thanks for your patience uh, appreciate you. uh, your you. support